Hi everybody, I just arrived in Seoul, Korea and I wanted to make a second video after seeing all your comments and questions on the first video. Thank you for that. This time the video will be in English. As pilots, we follow procedure to fly and handle the aircraft in order to guarantee the three most important things for passengers. Safety, punctuality and comfort. But there is another point that people don't always think of. It's try to save fuel for the planet, for the CO2 footprint and of course for the financial health of our airlines. And there is many ways for us pilots to do so and today I'm going to explain to you how. Flying high and climbing any time we can. The higher you get, the less dense the air will be. Low density causes low drag and therefore the aircraft can fly the same speed with less thrust. During the flight, we will climb any time we can, keeping in mind the plane's performances. Or in other words, if the aircraft is capable of reaching a higher altitude with enough engine thrust and wing capability. You must know that we always remain below the maximum altitude that guarantee a safe margin to the plane. For example, on the Boeing 777, we always start our cruise around flight level 330 and we climb every two hours approximately. Nowadays, planes like the 787 and the 350 are so light that they can reach their maximum altitude instantly after departure. The OPT in our flight computer is the optimal altitude. At a given max, this is the altitude at which distance fuel consumption is minimal. But the wind is not taken into account. Take the wind into account. Even if you usually save fuel by climbing, in some rare case, you can save fuel if the wind at your flight level is much stronger. In some even rarer case, it could be recommended to descend if the wind is stronger below. But huge difference is needed and it doesn't happen very often. Wind is mostly taken into account during flight preparation by choosing the route with the strongest tailwind or the latest headwind. Saving fuel during boarding passengers. First of all, while you are boarding and getting ready for your flight on the ground, the airplane is plugged to an electrical source called GPU, which stands for ground power units, and sometimes to the airport, air conditioning through GCU for ground conditioning unit. When we get close to departure time, we will start the APU, an auxiliary power unit. It's like a secret third engine at the rear of the plane that will allow us to have a tremendous source of energy for electricity, air conditioning, and be there to start the engines. Depending on the size of the plane, it can use up to 200 kg of fuel per hour. So the later we start it, the more fuel we save. Reducing speed. Globally, by reducing speed, you will save fuel until a certain point. In commercial aviation, we talk about the cost index. The cost index is a ratio of fuel cost to all the airline's other cost. I will not detail it today, but it's like a number we enter on our flight computer before departure. Low cost index will result in lower climb speed and lower cruise speed. If your airline's policy agrees to it and if you are ahead of schedule, reducing the cost index can make saving a huge amount of fuel on longer flight. Choose a more direct route. Even if your route is prepared to be the shortest possible, sometimes you can't avoid the fact that the airport departure and arrival procedure have specific routes to regulate traffic and some noisance in the area. Within these areas, we can get shortcuts if the ATC agree. We just need to ask request direct to the point we'd like to proceed. The controller can even call his calling, handling our next area to get better shortcuts. All along the flight, we will try to get direct routes to save both time and fuel. CDA for constant descent approach. Most of the time when we approach our destination, the ATC will give us altitude clearance in a stair-step fashion to regulate the traffic around the airport. But in some cases, we might get a clearance for CDA approach that will allow for a smooth, constant angle descent for landing instead of the many throttle adjustments required by the step-by-step -step clearances we will descend at full idle throttle and save fuel cda must be published on the airfield maps and you must obtain a clearance to descend this way visual approach in some airfield we might get visual approach which means that we will proceed by visual references to the runway in this case we must keep visual contact with the ground and with the preceding traffic 
Our pro trajectory will be significantly shorter and we will save hundreds of kilograms of fuel. Unfortunately, most of the biggest airports we fly into around the world don't allow for visual approach and as there is too much traffic. However, it is possible on smaller Sonoda with airport to land this way. Flap configuration for landing. While approaching the runway, we set the flaps on full for landing. But by selecting one step above such as flap 25 on 777 or flap 3 on Airbus 320, we will fly with less drag and so less fuel is consumed by the plane. However, we will approach at a higher speed so we must always take into consideration the length of the runway we will land on and be sure we are keeping our safety margin. Reversers idle on landing. Just after touchdown, we apply the reverse thrust to improve decelerating on the runway. We will do that by pulling backwards levers attached to the thrust levers. There are usually two possible settings, full and idle. By selecting idle, the thrust will be lighter and will burn less fuel. In a similar way to the flap configuration, we must ensure before landing that the length of the runway is, su is sufficient and therefore allow to keep a safe margin regarding our weight and approach speed. Taxi in to the gate. After the landing, we can turn off one engine and taxi with the remaining one. An interesting thing to think about is the direction of your turns, especially as the last one. Indeed, you wouldn't want to have the opposite engine running on your last turn at low speed. This is a significant fuel saving procedure on a daily scale. As you can see, we have many ways to optimize our flight, save fuel and reduce our carbon footprint for the planet. Keep in mind that small gains multiplied by the millions of flights every day can make a big change. And every pilot in the world feels concerned about this, I'm sure. Also remember that nowadays aircraft use less than 3 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers for each passenger. It even matches the efficiency of most modern cars and you would not achieve a better performance traveling very long distance with other types of transportation. We can only hope that manufacturers will keep on designing engines more efficient and airplane more lighter to keep on the carbon footprint reduction. Thanks again for watching, leave your comments and questions in the comments if you have and see you soon.